Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So markets are in turmoil, right? But we kind of saw this coming with the Fed raising the interest rate. So that's not really surprising to any of us. Um, but what I think is probably going to be a little bit more important to probably pay attention to is going to be the treasury yields, because those are going to be telling how investors are going to be feeling here in the future. And yesterday, I noticed that there was another um, another inversion um, inside of the yield curve on the uh, on the on the treasuries, right? So, what is the yield curve? What are bonds, treasury stuff like that? Now, if you're not familiar with what a bond and a treasury is, a, a bond is let's just talk bonds real simple. A bond is a promise to pay you back the, what you paid for it plus an interest rate. It's a loan, right? That's all it is. And the nice thing about U.S. government issued bonds is that they're guaranteed, right? And they're like the most stable bond that you can possibly get. And if you had bought a bond like back in the early 80s, it was awesome because bonds pretty much just had nothing but a dropping in interest rates to them. So as interest rates began to fall, the bonds that are already in existing, you can sell those things. They're liquid, right? So you can find other investors who are willing to buy your bond, right? Or the remaining duration of your bond because they pay a higher interest rate to them. And since yours has a higher interest rate to them, you can actually sell them for a premium. Now, it works exactly inversely to that if interest rates go up. So as interest rates go up, if you have bought a bond that pay, that has a lesser yield to it, like, you know, it, its yield is lesser than the ones that are selling now, the premium that you get to sell yours for diminishes, right? Because you have to sell yours for a little bit of a loss to attract an investor who gets to buy a brand new bond that pays a certain interest rate to it, right? So in order to make those like an even buy for the investor, you have to sell your bond for just a little bit of a loss. Make sense? Okay. If that doesn't make sense, then um, I don't know, maybe go back and rewind and try it again. But that, that's basically how it works. Interest rates go down, all the previous bonds that were sold, the premiums go up. Interest rates go up, all the previous bonds that were sold, the premium on those goes down. The amount that you can sell them for, the liquidity of them, okay? So what's going on with the yield curve and why, nerv why there are nervous investors in there and they're causing this distortion inside of the yield curves? Because basically, uh, uh, when you go off and you buy bonds, it's gonna be something like this, right? A one month bond pays low interest rates, through to year bond pays a higher interest rate, right? Pretty simple. Short term, low, long term, high. It's kind of like buying a house, same thing. You know, you get to take out a 15 year mortgage, you're gonna pay less of an interest rate to it. Now, the the inversion of the yield curve, what's basically happened is, is that a couple of weeks ago that we had a, a an inversion between the two year and the three year, right? And what happened was is that investors went out and they as they started looking for investments to buy, they said, you know what, in two years, I am really nervous about what may take place here in two years. And now I could buy this really guaranteed investment, but you know what? What I mean by nervous is that I don't want my money tied up because there's going to be undervalued, underappreciated assets here in about two years. That's what they're saying, right? And they, w they don't want to have their money tied up in a bond. They want to have that, that liquidity in order to transfer over to another asset. So the people who sell bonds, right, you know, they are like, you know, they have this interest rate towards them. They're like, oh, we don't have any buyers for them. Well, we got to pay a higher interest rate for, you know, to sell this two year bond. And, you know, and they keep, you know, raising the interest rates until they find an investor who says, okay, well, I'm really willing to risk my money in two, for the two years, you know, at that interest rate. And that's, you know, what they're saying is that in two years, I'm nervous. I'm not nervous about three years. I'm not nervous about, you know, one year from now. I'm, I'm nervous about two years from now. And then as, ner as the more the the investors get you know this nervousness builds up you know as far as where they're going to be able to tie their money up or how long they're going to be able to tie their money up you have a bigger inversion of the yield curve so like right now they're worried about two years but then i noticed the other day that we had an inversion or actually yesterday on the 20th we had an inversion of the one month and the three month which means that investors right now are worried about tying up their money right and so they're demanding a higher interest rate right now for a one month bond than they are for three months from now. So they are more willing to tie their money up for three months than they are to tie their money up right now. And that is where this inversion is happening. And so what you end up looking like is we have something like this kind of going on where a three year and a two year bond, right? So. Looking down here at the squiggly little line down here, right? So you can see the three-year 
pays lesser of an interest rate than the two year. This is the inversion. And the same thing is happening down here between the one month and what is it, the three month, right? Where the one month is paying a higher interest rate than the three month bond is. Okay, this is an inversion. And eventually what you'll end up seeing is something like this, right? Where, you know, all these other bonds will be paying a higher interest rate until you get very long term and then these longer term bonds will start to pay. And then you can eventually have a full inversion where, you know, where it just completely like, you know, the opposite way. But it, it usually it stretches out, goes flat and then and then starts going on but this is this is the bending of the yield curve is what they refer to okay so i hope that it, i hope that helps to explain things right and so when you have this this inversion that's what they're that's what's going on is that you have nervous investors out there they do not want to tie their money up and not even if it's guaranteed until they get to a certain interest rate and they say okay well now, now you got me. Now I'm willing to tie my money up, you know, even on the short term, because, you know, I think here in the short term, that asset over there, it's going to be dropping. It's going to be, you know, because I could be, I could be, you know, holding on to my money and buying that thing for a whole lot cheaper. But, you know, those interest rates look a little too sweet, especially since they're guaranteed. All right. So I hope that explains the yield curve. I don't think a whole lot of people explain it quite like that. You know, I hope it helps. <laughs> you know, anyway, uneducated economist. Talk to you guys later.